in order to find a tangent at an arbitrary curve f of x at a point a we will calculate the slope of the secant through a and a nearby point b after investigating the limit of the slope as h goes to zero if the limit exists we call it the slope of the curve at point A and we define the tangent at A to be the line through A having this slope and later we will interpret the derivative as this instantaneous rate of change of a function at a point. So get your GeoGebra guide out and go to page 2 and let's follow the 10 steps to setting up the approximation of a tangent to the graph of a function. Step number 1, create the graph of f of x. Well, step number 0, open GeoGebra. Step number 1, create the graph f of x. So in the input box we will type f of x equals x squared. You have to use the caret to activate the exponent. Hit enter and very fine graph of x squared. Step number 2, place point A on the graph of f of x equals x squared with the point button. And click anywhere on this. It should highlight when it's selected and we'll create point A. Step number three, create a slider named H with the slider button. Slider button can be found here. Slider, click where you'd like to create it. We're gonna name this slider H. We set the max and the min. The min will be set at point zero one. The max is fine at five, but on our increment, let's do zero zero one. Apply those changes and now we have our slider where H equals one. Click back on the move tool and you can drag it to change the h value. Step number four, create point b and c on the graph of f of x. Go to the input box and type the script that I've provided. b is equal to this x of a calls the x coordinate of the a point plus h which will be our horizontal distance between a and b and then on the y coordinate we're going to plug in the x coordinate of b into the function f of x. When you've typed that in, hit enter. It'll place point b on the graph. By setting b dependent to point a, as we slide point a, point b will move and always maintain a constant horizontal distance of h. We can bring b closer to a by moving the slider h. We also want to create point c which would be the x-coordinate of b and the y-coordinate of a. This will create a third point that will allow us to make a triangle to better visualize the slope. Step number five, create polygon ABC by typing polygon brackets a comma b comma c into the input box. So on step number six we can use the distance or length button. It can be found under the angle. Go down to distance or length. We can identify segments AC and BC. Step number seven, create line AB in the input box. Type the word line, square brackets, A comma B, to create our secant line that travels through A and B. It's getting a little crowded here now between A and B, and we can hide the segment C, which is opposite point C, by selecting the little circle and or deselecting it. And now it's a little clearer. If you're on the move button, you can also click on letters to move them around to make them more visible. Step number eight, create a slope variable. In the input box, type the word slope is equal to the y-coordinate of a minus the y-coordinate of b over the x-coordinate of a minus the x-coordinate of b. That doesn't show up on our coordinate plane, but over in the algebra box, we will see a slope variable that now gives us the slope of our secant, and it should change dynamically as we slide a and move B around. Step number nine, intercept two objects to identify the Y intercept. Go to the new point, go down and select the intersect two objects. Let's click on the secant line and then click on the Y axis. That'll give us point D there that will change along with A and B and you can see that D changes and over in the algebra box always identifying the Y intercept. Step number 10, just a few notes on changing objects. You can change the color of an object. Right click on an object, go to object properties, select color where you can choose a new color, select style where you can change the thickness of the line. You can change your x squared graph. We can right click, go to object properties. We can change the thickness of our secant line. We can change it, the color to red. We can drag A. We can slide H. 
One last thing on step number 10, we can change from standard form to slope intercept form by right clicking on the equation of the line and selecting equation y equals mx plus b. You can also right click and go back to standard form since the since I'm asking you to answer your questions in slope intercept form let's select it and we've completed the 10 steps we have our dynamic software where we can change A and B we can bring B closer to A using the slider H which is the horizontal distance between A and B we can display the limit as H goes to 0 B gets closer and closer and closer to A we want the tangent of the line at point 2 4 Let's drag A over to where X equals 2. You can ballpark it here going to 2, 4. You could also, as long as you're holding down the left click button, drag down, line it up perfectly with the 2, let it go. A should be level with 4. The coordinate is also listed here, 2, 4, so we got it right on 2, 4. Now it's just to see where B is. B's up all to the, out of the picture. Let's drag our h down so let's take the limit as h goes to zero b gets closer and closer and closer so we get it to almost zero now we got a nice secant line which is virtually the tangent line and as i follow the line down it looks like it's going to have a slope of four and a y-intercept of negative four now these are approximations as this is one hundredth off and this one is two hundredths off we can check it here it checks out just double click on the f of x function. Let's change the x squared to a x caret 3, so x to the third plus 2. Hit enter. Real time changes the, the graph without going through the 10 steps. Drag it down and then we'll zoom back in. So a down here to 1. Got it right there, right on 1, 3. Looks like this equation would be y equals 3x with a y-intercept of 0. Uh -huh.